Good morning, thinker. Yeah. Leave in about 15 minutes. Just remember a little bit of teal. Just remember teal and a little bit of purple and back away from the detail. I'll remember. I'll try and remember while you're gone. Not sure if I can do that because, you know, I need you here to remind me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all good. Um, I'll probably leave in 15 minutes too and have someone else paint. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. I'll have my wife come in. Do the painting. You know, I'm going to go back to this opener. I really enjoy having this opener up now. I looked at it real quick this morning uh, on my computer right before um, starting the stream. And I'm like, wow, that palm frond in my painting is way too green. It's just, it's way off the charts green. It's a wonderful comparative. Okay. I will back away from the detail right after I finish this darn stick. I want to get that stick in there right. And now, let me see. Ah, it's still pretty wet. I'm going to go ahead and fuzz out that little bit of the stick as well. Quick. All right. 4.30. Setting my watch. So we're going to continue on with more of the background back there. As I get the uh, canvas set up a bit better. Yeah, that would be kind of cool to uh, have uh, my wife come on and have her comment. She does a podcast on um, Spotify. It was anchor.fm, but Spotify bought them out, it looks like. And uh, it's called called a zoo notable and where she takes books that she's uh, read and does like the kind of like the five biggest ideas from each one actually a really good podcast and because now that we have podcasts on youtube um i'm gonna download them all and start moving them to youtube for her because she's got a youtube channel that she doesn't use that often Ula, welcome. Good to see you again. I've missed you all week. Glad you can make it. All right, getting some more of these colors out. I'll, I'll be glad when I'm done with this big tube of ultramarine blue. I don't want to waste it, honestly. But it's um, it's it's just getting too thick. I guess I could I could quickly put like a couple drops of refined linseed oil in it and that will thin it up again back to its normal consistency because it's you know it's an old tube so it can, it tends to thicken up. I could uh, offset it that way. Okay, to start, we will take a bunch of this ultramarine blue and add medium to it. And I'm going to make my darkest dark up and then work from that because that gives me an idea of where I'm at as far as the, the blues and things back there. And I remember what I did. I mixed yesterday was ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and uh, some sap green, like a bunch of sap green to make this really dark, dark. And then I lightened it up a bunch. So t today and Monday are holidays, so can join. I have listened to your live streams in the evenings. Oh, thank you for, <laughs> for doing that. Hopefully they're help helpful. Oh, 
Oh, that's right. It's a holiday uh, for many countries. In the uh, United States, we call it Good Friday, but I think in other countries it's called s something else. Uh, we, um, I have some co-workers that are in Portugal, and they're off today. But they don't call it Good Friday, they call it something else. I'm not sure what they call it. I don't have off. That's what they call it. Chris isn't off. Day 21! Oh, fantastic! Congratulations! I see. We got these new emojis and that I can do. Look at that. Heart. <laughs> I can make my own emojis. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Okay. Um, I'm saying a lot of ums this morning. Could mean that the brain is not working as well as it should right now. That's okay. We'll get to it. What I want to accomplish today is to at least get this twig looking good. I erased the whole thing yesterday because I put it in the wrong place. And I was thinking about it yesterday as well, afterwards, about the drawing of it. And it reminds me kind of like a hand. If you look at the reference, you know, it's it's like a stick that comes out and it's got some fingers to it. You know, that kind of thing. Let me do a full screen around the reference. And what I've done before in the past, especially with human arms and hands, is... I draw the, the hand first so that, you know, you have the body of the figure in a placement. But instead of doing, you know, the humerus, you know, the top part of the arm, the bottom part of the arm, uh, you know, the forearm, and then the hand, a lot of times you can make a, you know, do the placement of the hand first and then lead it back to the body. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get the placement of that end part down first. We'll call it the fingers. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at where it is on the reference in relation to the head of the tiger. And it ends about right here. And then curls down into these leaves, looks like. The reason why this is a little bit easier as far as the drawing's concerned is because, um, you know, I do this a lot when I'll, if I'm, if I'm just free drawing something, I'll draw the head, like the head of the, of the, the individual, the person, and it has a good size, but then the body will get a little bit bigger as I go down. And then the hips will get a little bit bigger, then the legs will get bigger, but you know, I'm growing the figure as I go down. So the proportions tend to grow. Um, and this way, you can place the beginning and the end and just fill in between it's, you know, and get those proportions uh, down a little bit easier or be a bit more accurate with your proportions because you're measuring the final area the the location of where you want to end up first and then building the tracks to get there basically are you going to do a video on painting hands oh would you like me to is there a um a need for that do you have trouble painting hands i mean i, I that i don't know that's kind of like a, a moot question hands are tough they're they're like portraits they're the, the second and third portrait of the body. The third and fourth portrait is the feet. <laughs> That's how difficult hands are. They're just as complex.
Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be a good idea. Actually, Finish, that shows up on here. I was looking at their Instagram. Yeah, hands are really difficult, Ula. Uh, I was looking at their Instagram, and they are doing a series of oil paintings on hands. So they're practicing oil painting, and they decided, hey, you know, while I'm practicing oil painting, I'm going to pick one of the di most difficult subjects there are and practice that as well, uh, which is hands. And they look really good. Doing a good job. Finish is doing a great job on that. All right, just working my way back now. Looking at where things fall vertically based on the palm frond here. Like there's some moss or something that's coming down here. Yeah. There they are. Finish. Good morning to you. <laughs> I know you came in. I was just talking about you because we were talking about how difficult hands are. And I um, think her asked if I would do a video on how to paint hands because they're so difficult. And I was like, yeah, sure. I would love to. Uh, and then I was thinking about your Instagram where you're doing, you're practicing oil painting. And you have some wonderful hands that you, you're doing. They look really good. You know, my, my one little critique or um, thing to improve on them was just some coloration changes. But the fact that I, I had nothing to say on their drawing, which is the hardest part, is fantastic. Thank you. Focusing on negative space has helped me a lot with hands. Oh yes, that's such a good point. And any other tips that you can, you know, now, now that you're kind of actively into it, you're thinking about it, any other ideas that you can help us out with hands? Okay. Trying to get the stick looking good, but not too detailed. I'm using some very subtle values here. Honestly, I'm finding that I have uh, way too much light in my face, you know, on my kind of reflecting into my eyes. So I'm moving the lights around to help me see things, <clears throat> especially when you work in these really dark areas that happens. Oh, also, Ula, congratulations again on the 21 days. That's absolutely fantastic. 
Um, couple questions. Are you, uh, how are you tracking your, your streak? And what are you working on most? I would like to hear what you're having fun with. Okay, finish says, uh, hmm, in my mind, <laughs> I picture uh, imaginary vertical and horizontal lines, like an X and a Y axis. I use these to gauge the difference in angles and fingers, uh, if that makes it. Yes, it does completely, 100%. Um, that is uh, one of the best ways to measure. Uh, continually practicing that is fantastic. I'll explain um, what Finish is, is talking about visually. Hopefully I can do it visually. Actually, I did it the first thing because I wanted to place the end of this twig here, this stick that's coming out from the tree. And I do have, you know, I'm looking at my reference and I see that it starts at the edge of this dark tree. So that gives me like a horizontal placement, right? But then I needed to figure out where vertically on that line is it going to go. So I'll draw an imaginary line on the reference horizontally over to something it matches. So if I do that on the reference, which you can't see like a horizontal line, it kind of hits right here on the ear of the tiger. And then I'll do that on my painting this imaginary, imaginary horizontal line, and I'm like, bam, right there. That's where it goes. And then I was looking at the transition of some of the little kind of bends in this stick. Where does that happen? So I'll draw a vertical line on the reference, and it goes down to about here on this uh, palm frond, this, little, this one kind of point, and draw it up on my reference, and there it goes. And if you get really good at that, you don't have to hold up your brush or anything to the reference or to your painting to figure it out. You can, in your head, just quickly draw a vertical and a horizontal and know where that's going to hit and then just make your placement. Um, yeah, the more you do that, the faster you get at it and then it'll look like you're just, uh, you know, super accurately drawing. <laughs> right away. People are, are going to ask you, wow, how did you do that? How did you get that in the perfect spot so effortlessly? <laughs> and only you will know. <laughs> now that does presuppose, which I like that term, presuppose that you have something to measure against, right? And most of the time, you know, you've already started on your painting. You're about, you know, somewhat down in your painting. But at the very, very beginning, you just have to guess. There's a, a beginning guess. And usually that guess becomes your, uh, the point from where you measure everything else. An example of that would be if this was a completely blank canvas and I wanted to place the tiger's head, I could look at the reference and just say, generally it's up in this area. And then start placing the tiger's head there. And then measure everything against it, you know, with my drawing. And if it's off a bit, maybe I leave it, maybe I make some changes. But you place one thing and then you say, that is my center of truth. That's my... Um, that's my measurement that I'm going to call correct and I will measure everything else against. Yeah, great idea on the uh, verticals and horizontals finish. Thank you. And uh, the negative space. Uh, two really big important points. Ula, I'm uploading uh, those in my blog, which uh, nobody follows. Oh, Link it here. I'll follow. Mostly working with colored pencils. Couple days with oils. Yeah, I love your colored pencils. It's fantastic. Uh, rest, usually the days where I find it hard to fit fit it in. I'm using, I'm using graphite. And those are the really man like Ashton said about her sketchbook. Oh, and, <laughs> yeah. 
I have a lot of those. There's a lot of sketchbooks that are terrible. Yeah, though, but those were good. Those are the days where you're like, you know what? The important thing was building that habit, and that's what I did. I got another uh, markup on the on the board, building that habit. Yeah, you said uh, put a link to your blog on here if you'd like, so we all can follow you. Would love, would love to see that. Love to support you as an artist. Uh, anybody here, if you have a, you know, I'm following everybody on Instagram uh, so far. But if you have any place else you want me to follow you, I will do that. Facebook, YouTube, a blog, website. Uh, Thinker said he would only be here for about 15 minutes, which um, he's probably already gone. Uh, you know, got a busy day today, I guess, which is cool. Very cool. So he was kind enough to show up and say, hey, I'll only be here for a few minutes. So thank you, Thinker. So that's another question I have. Um, yeah, you guys are bringing up all kinds of cool questions for me today to ask you to get some information to see if I can help in any way. Um, so where do you, well, I guess if you, if you put your, your blog URL up here, we'll figure it out. Um, but let us know if, uh, you know, where you, what blog platform you use and if it's easy or hard for you to set up. I do. You know, I do a lot of tech stuff. My my job is originally with web development. And I could help a lot of other artists out, you know, get their websites and things set up if that's something that uh, many artists care about, right? That need help with. Something I like talking about. Well, at the moment, the blog is not really proper. Work in progress only, just uploading the daily work. Okay, cool. Yeah, you don't have to share. No, no worries. They're kind of always a work in progress, aren't they? I think, I'm, you know, it seems like every six months I'm, I'm getting tired of my you know, the look of my website and I'll uh, recode a new one, which takes me way too long to do. So if I, you know, the next time I do something like that, uh, it'll probably be just jumping on Squarespace, which costs a lot. Um, oh yeah, no text at all. You don't, don't worry about writing anything. Just getting it up there is important. When I started doing my uh, daily log, I would write all kinds of stuff. And then soon, you know, a, a time after that, I realized, okay, this is getting too arduous and I need to uh, make it easier because the, the most important part is just logging it so that I can go back and look at uh, what I've done and all kinds of stuff. I think many people are happy to sh just share their work on Instagram and things like this. Uh, and a lot of times the blogs and stuff are reserved for, um, you know, portfolios and stuff, you know, okay, I want to try and make money with this. So my, my blog is going to be a portfolio. So they only put their best work on there, which is totally fine. I mean, I'm doing something weird and different where I'm sharing everything for everybody. Okay, I want to step back and look at this stick. The last thing I want this to be is distracting from the tiger.
Okay, yeah, I think that's good. It has uh, a, some good values to it. Not too dark, not too light, uh, just enough hard edges to uh, know what it is. Not too soft so it fades into nothing and not too hard that it uh, attracts too much of attention. I'm getting into the details, so I'm going to stop doing that. What I will do is add just a couple more little bits of interest here. I, I really like the idea of this tree being kind of, you know, overgrown with moss back there. It really gives this idea of a very wet environment. Okay. Now, when I started the stream, I have this opener, and uh, maybe you guys have seen it. I think you came in a couple minutes. But I have this opener here, and what's nice about it is I see that right before I start the stream, and the, the first thing that I saw was the palm frond on my painting, our painting, is just way too intense. So that intensity really needs to come down. Um, Hopefully you see that too. And I'm going to get a bigger brush. The number six filbert, still using the monarch brushes. And we're going to oil out the entire palm frond and some of the background behind it. I'm going to make sure that this tiger this space right here is dry enough. It, as long as no paint comes off on my finger, it'll be fine. Oh, let me let me zoom out so you can actually see what I'm doing. Oh, I need to change something on my computer. I'll be right back. Sorry for not being completely set up. That's the most difficult part about this sometimes is when I'm moving faster, I have to move the camera around so you can see what I'm doing. Such a big painting. That's why I, I see a lot of uh, live streaming artists and they just, they do smaller works. Something I'm looking at to do late, you know, after this. All right, let's oil this out, which all this color, all this value We'll come back and love this. It's, it's like Christmas. See what it really looks like.
Now there's an advantage to uh, when you're glazing to have the layers of paint that you're glazing over uh, much lighter than you want the glazing layers to be. Because the idea of glazing is not to add a bunch of, well, I mean, there's, you know, using transparent paint, adding medium to it, not too much medium to it, but trying to stay away from white as much as possible and the brighter colors like yellow and things like that, because they tend to make things look hazy. So whenever you can use pure dark color, um, it looks a lot better. So the first thing I'm going to do is considering that we have already have a lot of these darker colors made up, I'm going to go into, you know, I have some area here that I didn't even paint on. Still got some of the gray showing through, but I'm going to go in between the leaves on this palm frond. and just adjust some of that color back there so it's a little bit more cool. Matches what's above. I don't need to do much detail within there at all. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter, honestly. Even back here where the, the jungle, the lighter parts of the jungle kind of come down. Um, what I can do is paint like a palm frond back there coming down. Maybe at a similar angle, you know, it's just kind of like shape of a palm frond to kind of echo what's in the foreground a little bit. I think it's really far back there. It's small. Maybe a little bit larger. Ula says, you talked about oiling out at some point, but cannot remember. Is it so that you now oil it out, but some glazes on top, will it become again a bit dull when when drying or is it going to stay that nice? Actually, um, I have a painting, another painting that I'm working on. One of the, actually the last video <clears throat> that I put out, you could see this happening. There's a part in the, uh, the, the figure's head where there was like kind of dark hair and I put oil on that uh, to oil out a cup, like a small section and it stayed vibrant you know after the the oil had dried on it now normally um what you want to do is after you put oil down you know like this oil that i've put it put down here you want to build pigment into it there's something about and i don't know the science behind this uh specifically there's something about having just oil on a canvas without any pigment could uh, cause some issues in the far future. Okay. Uh, this, I'm not talking about anything within the next three or four decades. Right. Um, but linseed oil will give you that nice kind of glaze over the painting. It's not something that you want to use as a varnish, <clears throat> you know, a Damar varnish or a Gamvar from Gamblin are the varnishes that you would want to use. Um, for real varnishes, but it, those sections will stay uh, much more glossy. Even the ones where I paint, these will stay much more glossy and vibrant as they dry because <clears throat> I have a lot more oil in them. Uh, and it depends on, you know, the pigment that you add within your glaze, because some of them it will be oily in patches and then you'll see a really dull patch in some place. Uh, so it's kind of uh, hit and miss. But that's okay because eventually at the very end of this painting, after it's dry for a few months, I'm going to come back with some Gambar, uh, which is a varnish by Gamblin and varnish the whole thing. And that's a lot of fun because that's where the whole painting comes back to life.
there's a lot of actually, I was watching an Instagram reel the other day where an artist was glazing a bunch of paintings or no sorry varnishing a bunch of paintings um we love showing that off because it's like you painted it yesterday or that day or that moment makes them look really beautiful all right so the background behind that palm frond's done i don't need any more than what i just did just simple shapes kind of blurry things Sorry, I keep leaning forward because my tea is down there and I like my tea. I, I did notice that it looks kind of like there is a haze, right? Not a haze, but a, kind of like I, take, I took some light color down and I stopped here. So it looks like a bit of um, halo around this palm frond. So I want to make sure that, that those background colors really go come all the way down and over that palm prong just a little bit so it doesn't have that kind of halo effect. That would really uh, destroy the, the depth that I'm trying to create where the palm fronds in front and all of this is in the background. Okay, that's fine. Now the goal for this palm front, I got two or three things I want to do. Number one, I want to reduce all of this um, really bright color, this really in these really intense colors here. I want to reduce those down with a glaze, um, cool them off a lot. Within that, I want to bring the value down as well. So much so that this these like little uh, hot spots of sunlight that are hit, hitting the palm frond directly really are shown off. And, um, you know, fix some of the drawing at the same time. Some of the edges. Yeah, so let's, let's get to it. I was going to like continue working in the background all the way down, but yeah, I decided against that. Because it's hard to oil out just in these little small little teeth sections, you know, might as well do the whole thing. And I have a lot of this color mixed up, so that should work fine. Let's see. Because with glazing, what you're doing is it's an optical mixture, not within, uh, you know, like the paint jobs I do, it's an optical mixture because there's a different hue next to another hue and they kind of mix together this in this way the light is passing through one pigment hitting the other pigment and then uh, kind of mixing those colors within reflection how it's reflecting in some way so we're going to take advantage of that here by picking a color or hue or value that best uh, reduces the value of this palm front and cools it off so reduces the intensity as well so i'm going to add a bit more blue to this maybe a little bit more green in places as well a bluish green And I'm still really looking at the reference. There's some undulations in this palm frond, some differences in value. Actually, as I'm looking at these leaves, what it's reminding me of is corn. You know, if you buy corn at the store, because I don't have palm fronds here in Washington, but if I buy corn at the store, the leaves that you pull off of the corn, um, tend to look a lot like this. They have the same coloration, this kind of uh, bluish green coloration. <clears throat> not so, not as warm as we have here. Can add just a little bit of white to this.
<clears throat> Ooh, too much white. You can tell when you add too much white because if you add that over, it looks kind of like a haze. Um, actually, the perfect comparison, you know, this palm front here where it's really dry looks really hazy. And that little mark I put on has kind of the same hazy look. You know, why is that? Because there's too much white, basically. Um, you've gotten away from the... the intensity or the hue of that color, like right out of the tube. Best, best thing to do is to, if you need to neutralize a color, is try and neutralize it with, um, you know, another color that has a lighter value besides white. Now, don't, don't get me wrong, there will be times when you have to, you know, bring white into it. We did that a lot on the tiger, the body of the tiger. You just have to be careful with it that you're not using it too often. Oh, and see this leaf here that I started working on goes in front of the palm from behind it. Dealing with some new levels here. And so I need to get some opaque paint right here. Which I've already, I already have a bunch of paint mixed up that has uh, a bunch of um, medium in it. So it's, it's already transparent. So what I'll have to do is just build up some transparent layers there. Just be very subtle, trying to lay the paint on. Yeah, at this point on the palm frond, I need to bring some some white in. Let me try yellow first though and see if I can get a very cool green going that's lighter. Let's see how that works. Or I can bring in some of this teal. It's actually, what's it called? Uh, cerulean blue hue. I don't know why my brain forgot that one. Uh, Finish says, I'm trying to work on this as well. I'm using too much white and my colors always look dull. I find it tricky to try to raise the value of the color without losing intensity. So, hmm. It's kind of an overall problem. One of the things that um, I talked about on my tutorials where I was doing the eye tutorial, the nose and the mouth is, especially with Caucasian skin, um, you know, if you look at my hand here and 
I'm a fairly pale individual, and this light is really high. You know, it's a very bright light. And you think, wow, this is, I need a lot of white in there, right, to, to reach that. But then you put white next to it, right? And then there's, <laughs> I mean, there's, there's such a high level of ISO on my camera, you can't really tell. Let me see, let me bring this down. Yeah. So there's your difference. This is white. This is my skin. So it's, it's really an overall change, kind of an idea where you don't, you start so far away from white that, um, it's easier to reach those higher values with a combination of yes, white, but with uh, transparent earth orange, some yellow, some red. So kind of getting that understanding. I actually got that from a video on YouTube from Greg Kreutz, K-R-E-U-T-Z. He was doing a portrait of an individual and, he's, and he says, yeah, when you look at this portrait, you're going to think that, oh, I need a bunch of white for this portrait, don't I? And then he put a paper towel, a white paper towel up next to the model's face. And you're like, whoa, look at all of those colors in the skin. It's so far away from white. Uh, so a lot of times having that comparative. Now, the other thing is you're painting on white ash, uh, finish. Uh, try painting on a neutral gray or some neutral color. I'm pretty sure you're painting in white. From what I remember, it was a white canvas that you didn't do much with. Um, it's really easy. If you have any like acrylic paint, you, you can thin it out a bunch with water and just kind of watercolor it all over a canvas that already has gesso on it. And that will bring down the value of your canvas really easily. Or you can get, you know, um, like a mix up a gray acrylic paint could be cheaper or get gesso. So you can get a white uh, container of white gesso and then some black acrylic paint and mix those together. Or you can get a white and a black gesso and mix those together to get a gray. But some other, hmm, some other value or some other color on your canvas first before you start painting, not white, you know, stay away from white in, in that instance. It makes it so much harder for you to figure out colors and values and things like that. You will start, you know, a lot lighter than you think um, when you're working on white because everything's relative. I need to create a very, you know, high value item when I'm doing that, you know, when I'm, you know, next, my hand next to this black background, my hand looks like white as a sheet, right? White as that uh, paper towel, but we know that that's different. But if I put my hand next up to a white canvas, you know, or, or this white paper towel, you know, there's not much difference there. So you're going to be adding a bunch of white to get there. But if you started here, like a darker background, you're going to say, ah, maybe a little bit of white, but more of some kind of pinkish colors, some uh, um, alizarin permanent, you know, these kind of things. You're going to be thinking more about color, not bringing in all this light value. Good morning, Ashton. Out for spring break, so I get to relax. Fantastic. Not really, though, because I still have work that's due when I return. <laughs> Isn't that always? The... Oh, you thought you didn't have anything to do on spring break. Well, let's give you something to do. We can't have you idle, like... <laughs> yeah, I gotta keep you busy. But hopefully it's fun stuff. Now, I consider art history fun stuff, so... 
I love art history, so um, I had a really good teacher for art history, so that was good. Hopefully that helps finish. Yeah, I now that I'm thinking about it, that that would be another really big critique for your work. Get away from white canvases uh, and try a bunch of different colors. Like, don't just go out and buy a whole thing of white. Try a very cheap way to... Um, Set up your canvases with some different backgrounds and see what you like. See what works. I never thought about using acrylics to tone the canvas. I'll try that next time. Yeah, it's really easy. It's a cheaper way of doing things. Um, and it works just as fine. As long as you put, you know, oil over acrylic and never the opposite, you're good. As soon as you put oil down on that canvas, you cannot go to acrylic ever again. I remember I, I have some really old canvases that I'm like, I'm not sure if there's oil on here, but I'm just going to act like there's oil on here uh, to be just in case. That's one of the biggest no-nos for oil painting. Never put acrylic over oil. It will flake off within a couple years, just right away. I think we talked about this before. Like the Last Supper, Leonardo da Vinci. Why it's falling apart. And it started falling apart five years after he was working on it. The church got really upset. But he was so busy at that time, he wasn't going back to fix it. So a lot of the pastors and priors, or I guess whatever they were called then, in Italy, uh, started painting on it, started fixing it trying to fix it and people were like no what are you doing you're messing <laughs> it's interesting the history of the last supper with uh of leonardo da vinci's uh how it's kind of like an amalgamation of all kinds of different non-artists trying to fix his work because he he was supposed to do a fresco, didn't know how to do a fresco, and just started painting directly on the wall. Did some in fresco, and then, you know, experimenting with different types of paint, namely acrylic type paints, you know, probably watercolor like things back in the day, you know. Different pigments, and then would put oil based pigments over. Yeah, just a, a disaster. The idea, amazing, you know, still lives in history today. But I think if you go there today, it's it's like almost fallen off the wall. There's like nothing left of it. Okay, now I'm going to lighten up some of the background in this area. I want this palm frond to fade off in this area and you can do that within two ways you can you can i can darken this up which i will do um and you can really kind of kill these edges here these sharp edges by bringing the value of the background and the foreground closer together and it will really help remove those sharp edges and you can kind of fuzz them out some as well. I left a lot of hard edges over here. So it's going to be really hard to, uh, to soften those up. But first I want to step back and see if the colorations that I'm using is actually working well there before I put it all over this palm frond. Okay, yeah, it's looking pretty good. I still have some range here. I can take a lot of the value down further if I want. Let's start that back here.
really going to bring a lot of this value down. Just throwing on a lot of color right now. I only have a few minutes left in the stream, unfortunately. I have to really be, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Conscious of my time. Because right after the stream, I only have, you know, so much time to finish up the stream where I, you know, I post for tomorrow and get that ready, take pictures of the work, do some edits of the, the those photos within Lightroom and Photoshop real quick so that they can go up on my website later and I can make thumbs for the next or thumbnails for the next videos and um, change up the opener now for, for that. So it takes me a bit of time after the stream, after I finish it, to really finish up the stream and get it ready for the, for tomorrow, for the next day. Um, wow, that needs to come down. And then I have to get to my exercise right after that. And I found that if, if I don't get right to exercising afterwards, and I say, oh, I'll try and do it later in the day, it almost never happens. So, uh, and what I've also seen is if I don't do my exercise in the day, like especially in the morning, my energy for the rest of the day is not near what it could be. Like I don't have near as much energy, as much focus. So it's essential that I get to that. So I have to start sticking to an hour stream which is great because I get too detailed as, as it is. So this is going to be good training for me to really get to the point on these paintings. You know, focus on what matters and not get lost in all the specific details. And I'm going to have to bring some opaque paint into this tomorrow to make sure that, you know, there's not a ghost of that back palm frond showing through. And I'm going, I'm doing much different in the drawing here than what's on the reference. So I need to figure that out. Probably be a lot of fixes tomorrow. It's always best to get it out of the way in the morning. Yeah. I feel so much better throughout the day when I do it. It's just, it's so easy to forget that because it's a bit arduous, you know? But my workout, I mean, even, like I do a 15 to 20 minute workout, not a huge thing. And then I have a walk around noon. We'll walk around the block, probably, you know, about a mile and that's it. And, you know, my energy goes through the roof and I sleep better. And then I go through these phases where I forget that. And I'm like, why is it my, why don't I have energy? Why is my sleep sucking? Yeah. Let's darken this up even more back here. Let's see how, let's see what we can get away with. I'm in an area that is so dark that it's it's probably hard to see on the stream it's kind of a lesson for myself if i can't if it's not so prominent on the stream why do i even care about it on the painting why am i going into so much detail on it as long as it's not distracting that's the main thing Great painting of a tiger, but man, I can't look away from that weird palm frond thing over there. 
Yeah, that's what I don't want to happen. Yeah, this value gets so light, and I want to darken it up, but not so much. It needs to be a cool area, and I feel the need to add some white to it, so I'm going to have to do that. I'm trying to get as much color into that white as possible, so I'm bringing um, some cerulean blue in there, some ultramarine blue, keeping it very cool so I can cool down these warm colors as well. But trying to remove that haze as much as possible. Let's see what happens on this. If I bust out some very light white with just a tiny bit of yellow in it because right here it's like this very cool color see i want to see how hazy distracting that is when i step back from it maybe a little tiny bit there Because I keep talking about it, but I, I always want to test. I always want to kind of say, oh, okay, well, is that still true? And in this situation, am I still right? And within glazes, it's so easy to fix and wipe off if it doesn't work. You know, it's uh, experimentation is, you know, easy to do. And you say going to spend this break working on my sculpture doing some digital planning for future relief prints trying to learn in <laughs> intaglio printmaking and putting stuff in my sketchbook for fun i should write down some specific goals though yes definitely good idea now not only write down the goals like hey you know why so write down these projects write down why what would make it really awesome for you? What you want to achieve with it, you know? Kind of like the smart goal kind of thing. The important part is why, you know, for yourself. Oh, I want to do this because it will broaden my ability and maybe my other printmaking techniques or give me another outlet for printmaking that could improve this or no, it would just be a lot of fun, you know, whatever. And then uh, after that, break it down into smaller chunks. The next most important thing. If you, if you have any goals in your life that you want to um, up the percentage that you achieve it by like 70 to 80%, uh, do exactly that. 
write it down, write it, write down why you want to do it, why it's important to you, review that, and then uh, break it down into steps, you know, plan it out. And also put those steps on the calendar or not, not even not for specific days for maybe this week or this month, I want to accomplish this part, this part, and this part. So, and it needs to be in this order. Um, what a great way to guarantee that you achieve something. All right, I'm going to step back real quick. We have to end the stream. But I want to look at that white to see if it looks terrible. And it actually, no, it doesn't look terrible at all. Actually, it doesn't look bad. It cooled it down well. I wouldn't want to do more white than that. Yeah, you can really see the difference between the very yellow, super intense palm frond part, like on the left side, and what it should be on the right, like the changes there. The, the three stark fin shaped negative spaces look a bit odd. They look too regular to be natural. Ah, thanks for pointing that out for me. Yeah, that's going to be hard to change, honestly, but I'm going to have to work on it. Let me see which ones you're, um, finish which ones you're talking about exactly are these, these ones here. So one, two, three, a bit, they do look a bit odd, don't they? They're very close to what's on the, I think because this one needs to be a little bit longer, maybe it would match them up better, but there is a similar space between them maybe i'm um, yeah those three are kind of standing out to be kind of odd distracting okay while i clean up you let me know if those are the three that you you see that's a problem Definitely make a note of it because that's one thing I always want to stay away from. Making nature look mechanical. It's, you know, it's a tendency that we do as humans to do that. Everybody does it. Yeah, those. Okay, good. So you saw it, saw it and I saw it. As soon as you said it, I was like, yep, you're right. It's so funny how you, you like you work on something for so long um, or even not for so long. And then someone says something and you're like, wow, how did I not notice, notice that before? Yeah. OK, so we're going to work on that first next. Next stream, uh, which will be tomorrow uh, at the same time. I don't do streams on Sunday, so Saturday will be here at 430 for me regular time for you guys, but uh, I'll be setting that up right after this so you can see that. We'll work on continuing with that palm frond over there and uh, making it look a lot less mechanical. Thanks guys for showing up, for uh, helping me out, answering a lot of questions, and the lower palm looks more natural. Okay, thank you so much Finish. I pre appreciate you, um, uh, the the input that you have, uh, Ula and everybody. Hey, congratulations Ula on the 21 days, keep going. Keep going. Keep reporting in on that. And uh, have a good vacation. I will see you guys tomorrow.